Cinematic mode, Exynos and AMD. I don't think any of these compatible Google has in store for this coming year. The Google Pixel 6 and the Google Pixel 6 Pro. The Google Tensor chip and maybe a foldable Pixel. Hello there, I'm David Flaring, your favorite digital artist, and in this video, I'll be going through all the tangible rumors, emphasis on tangible, tangible rumors that have surfaced about the Google Pixel, giving you the rundown on what to expect at Google's events, which will take place on the 19th of this month, October. So if you're interested in that, let's go. So before I start, if you want to skip through any of the chapters of this video, if you're looking for something in particular, there are timestamps in the description below to skip through the video. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the design. The Google Pixel 6 and Google Pixel 6 Pro have a very new and different design on the back. You have a horizontal camera setup like the one we saw on the Samsung Galaxy S10, but it spans across the whole width of the device and it produces a bit more. And below that, you have a matte finish back and above that, it's a glossy finish. The matte finish back will help prevent fingerprints and then the glossy finish will just add extra flair. On the front of the device, the screen, it's almost all screen with a centered hole punch cutout for a selfie camera with extra thin bezels. The Google Pixel 6 and Google Pixel 6 Pro will no longer use the under display earpiece like it did on the Google Pixel 5 and Google will now use a more traditional earpiece speaker after some users complained about the speaker being too loud and the sound leaking. The Google Pixel 6 and Google Pixel 6 Pro are both IPS68 dust and water resistant. The Google Pixel 6 is rumored to have a 6.4 inches AMOLED 90Hz panel which supports HDR10 Plus with an aspect ratio of 19.5 ratio 9 and is protected by Gorilla Glass Vectors which is the latest and the best form of screen protection. The Google Pixel 6 Pro is rumored to have a 6.71 inches LTPU AMOLED display which has a refresh rate of 120Hz and supports HDR10 with an aspect ratio of 19.5 ratio 9 and is protected by Gorilla Glass Vectors. Both the Google Pixel 6 and Google Pixel 6 Pro are rumored to feature an under-display fingerprint sensor, but it hasn't been clarified if the under-display fingerprint scanner would be an optical scanner or an ultrasonic scanner. Just like Samsung and the iPhone, Google is dropping the charger in box, so you will not get a charger break when you buy the Google Pixel 6 or Google Pixel 6 Pro. This is questionable, but then we get what we get. As far as the battery is concerned, it is rumored to be a 5000mAh battery which supports 33 watts wide charging and 23 watts wireless charging. The Google Pixel 6 and Google Pixel 6 Pro have three variants, the 128GB variants, the 256GB variants, and the 512GB variants, and they all come with 12GB of RAM each. The Google Pixel 6 will come in three colors, stormy black, kinda coral, and sort of sea foam, while the Google Pixel 6 Pro will come in three colors, stormy black, cloud white, and sort of sunny. Let me know what colors your favorite down in the comments and as you're commenting, it would be nice if you click on the thumbs up button and to go a long way if you subscribe to my channel. Okay, now let's move on to the camera. For starters, both the Google Pixel 6 and Google Pixel 6 Pro would have a main camera and an ultra wide camera, which is going to be different from the camera sensors that Google has been using in, Google, in the previous Google Pixel phones. The body Google Pixel 6 Pro would have an extra camera, which would be a 4 times optical zoom lens, telephoto lens, and the main sensor could be the 50 megapixel sensor from Samsung, the Samsung GN1 sensor, and to be able to capture 150% more light than the previous sensor used in the previous phones. The ultra wide angle camera would have a 12 megapixel sensor, and the telephoto camera would have a 48 megapixel sensor. These new specifications guarantee better and more colorful shots and improve night mode on both the models. Okay. Now we're going to move on to Google Tensor. Google Tensor has been teased for a while and it's the new chip that Google is producing themselves perfectly for the Google Pixel phones. It has a wide range of benefits from on device speech to text recognition, translating, magic eraser, face deep blur, and HDR video. I'm going to run down through all of them. First of all, on device speech to text recognition. When it comes to this, you'll be able to say or read out a message to your phone and be able to type it out for you and you'll be able to edit that text still with your voice using the AI to recognize and transcribe the text on your phone without any access to the internet and without you having to touch your phone. You just basically read it out and then your phone receives the audio and converts it to the text and then you edit that text again with your voice, just with your voice. So, Basically, it's just improved AI. It's also be able to translate speech to text in real time on your device without having to connect to the internet, which will be helpful in some tight situations, and then you get better Google Assistant. And when it comes to the camera, we have four new features to be expecting. The magic eraser, face deep blur, it will adjust skin tones perfectly, and HDR video. First of all, I'm going with face deep blur. When you take a photo of a moving person with your normal main camera, 
use with the usual phone without a censorship in it. You have the person with a blood out face, but on the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, the ultra wide camera will be taking multiple shots of the person at a higher shutter speed as the main camera takes its own different shots. And then the AI sort of uses these pictures to somehow sharpen the face, hereby de blurring the face. And then now we have the face de blur feature. Okay, for adjusting skin tones, computer photography on Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro is wrong to be improved when it comes to capturing people with darker skin tones or, or people of color. Usually on other devices, when you take pictures of people with darker skin tones, when the image is being processed to improve the quality, the bugs are raised in an effort to maintain that high dynamic range, leaving the skin looking a bit more washed out than that deep, rich, beautiful black. For this new update, that will be fixed. HDR video. HDR video was shown when the Snapdragon 88 was being released. And basically, it just captures three streams of video with different exposure settings and overlays them to give the video a very high dynamic range. And then the next one is Magic Eraser, which basically works like the spot healing tool in Photoshop where you remove unwanted objects or unwanted people in your picture. Okay, finally, the prices. The Google Pixel 6 is expected to retail at $750, while the Google Pixel 6 Pro is expected to retail at $1,099 or maybe $1,000, which is not cheap and it's quite expensive, especially if you're in Nigeria. There are rumors about Google releasing a new foldable device, which hasn't been really confirmed yet, but well, I do not want to bank on this because I don't think Google would want to do that, but we don't know what to expect, but this rumor is just a rumor. I don't think there's anything close to a confirmation about this yet. Let me know what you think about the Google Pixel 6, Google Pixel 6 Pro, and if you think they'll be written affordable this year. If you love the video, a sub would must be appreciated. If you thought it was just decent, it also would do for now. That's it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.